everybody. Uh, I had a totally different tutorial planned for you. Uh, but then life is weird, and so I decided that it would be this. Um, so today, I found, I found, so I find four leaf clovers like all the time. All the time, all the time. Uh, this is, these are all the four leaf clovers I found today. <laughs> um, actually, one of them is a five. Um, and so I found them at work on my way to coffee, and then I found a few in front of my house. Um, I'm up to 15 or 14 four leaves and one five today. Um, and I had something weird happen. I've been thinking about um, turning them into bookmarks. And then my sister messaged me 20 minutes later after I had told a coworker that uh, and said, hey, would you send me some four leaf clovers? Do you have some that you could send me? And I said, well, I mean, sure, why? And she said, well, um, I want to turn them into bookmarks. And I was like, holy cow, uh, that's random. My twin sister lives in Oklahoma. And um, and then I said, I want to go tell the coworker that I want to coffee with. And um, my other coworker, he wasn't at his desk, but at my other coworker um, was in his office and I've given him a clover that I found before. And uh, so I decided to, I was like, hey, this, I was talking to him before work closed for the day. Um, and I, I said, hey, also something really random happened. I totally found um, a bunch of four-leaf clovers on my way to coffee. Uh, I found 11 and then a five-leaf. And he said, well, what are you going to do with them? Like, have you ever thought about, I mean, making them into something, like a bookmark or something? And I said, holy cow. Uh, what? Uh, okay. And so I told him and I showed him my sister's message. And he, he said, I hope you're paying attention because uh, you evidently need to make these into bookmarks. So I'm doing just that. And I decided that they shouldn't just be laminated, which is what um, uh, I have seen before, like one or two times. But that instead, I thought that they should, um, I should turn them into pieces of art. And so I'm getting some of them out. Um, these are a bunch of four leaves. And I am intentionally not, um, I'm intentionally not uh, drawing the bookmark lines ahead of time. I'm just kind of gonna see what happens um, and hope for the best because I'm gonna work around where these will go. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do, I have a, little tiny jar here that um, I may have to trim some of the stems to ultimately put them in that spot. Um, but I'm gonna, I like how they're placed here. And so I'm just gonna take my watercolor pencil and I'm gonna trace around the edge of this jar. Um, Cause like you've seen me do on other tutorials, I'm gonna use that as a guide for where not to paint. And I'm gonna set the clovers up here. Um, so that up at the top, I think they might be off the screen, so that I will know the order that I kind of had in mind when I um, started tracing them. I might trace them all and then take them off. Um, and I'm just gonna play with some blends here. Um, so you could do this though with anything. Like if you found a, um, a pretty piece of, of like a, pretty floral, you could press it. Uh, you could do this with another design or a tiny drawing that your kid did. Um, you could even do a tiny drawing inside of one of these circles. I just think it's a fun way to kind of showcase them. Um, so now I have all these circles and I'm gonna set my clovers up at the top in the order that they were in. That part probably doesn't matter, um, but I want to do it that way, so I'm going to. Um, and I'm just getting them out of the way. And so here's where the fun begins. Um, I actually intend to do this with my, um, with this palette again. I'm really loving the colors on here and I have some interesting ones that mix together. And because it's St. Patrick's Day, the other reason that I decided, oops, the other reason I decided this was the tutorial to do is because it's St. Patrick's Day. Um, I picked the green even though I think that it could, um, I could blend with whatever. I think I'm gonna do an angled rainbow. And so this will also help you guys as you, and gals and whatever people, um, <laughs> this will help you as you uh, go through 
to work on blending, right? I was talking a little in the, um, well, I haven't posted this one yet, but when you watch the rocket ship one, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but just paying attention to adding enough water and how all that works out. So I'm going to start by making sure, see how it's hard to see a little bit, but if you're using a pan or you're using um, the tube paint, this is dried tube, tube paint, I'm just making sure that there's plenty of movement and another word to use for it is shine on the watercolor. So I've added plenty of pigment. And then, and I have lots of water on my brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here. Um, and I might even go through a couple of times on what these colors are gonna be. Um, I rinsed off my brush and now I'm gonna go over where I already had pigment um, to add some there. And then I'm gonna drop some in. And I'll be doing more of that dropping in. So now I'm gonna rinse my brush um, and move on to some orange. So this is kind of a yellow orange color. Ooh, actually, well, maybe I'll drop some of that in. So this is a yellow orange color and I'm gonna just do the same thing. Let it bleed, let it go together. I just, I thought that this was very appropriate for St. Patrick's Day. Um, and I'm just gonna keep adding it in. Uh, do, 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 do. and then uh, spread it around and now I'm going to go to my bolder orange this is my transparent orange is the name of the color um, and so I don't think I'll end up with a judging by the amount I've done so far I'm not going to end up with a full rainbow um, but I might we'll see um, it just kind of depends on how much I vary the width of my stripes um, and so I'm actually going to take a minute here uh, and spread some color around. So I want a little bit of orange here. And I'm gonna get a little bit of that first yellow I did and put it over here. Um, and a little bit of that second one. I just want it to have a little bit more interest to it than being solid stripes. Um, and I actually want this orange, I don't love how it got so lightly pigmented there. And so I'm gonna add a little more. Um, so now I'm going to move to red, like a pinky red. Um, fun fact about me, I'm actually not a big fan of the color red. Um, uh, my, my sister really likes red and black and white, but I don't. Um, that's okay. You might. All right. Um, but I'm going to use some for this cause it's part of the rainbow. All right. Um, so one other trick to make sure that you don't get too much bleeding in the like color bleed in the wrong place is to wait until you already have some color down, right? See how it's there and I've left this white space and now I'm gonna fill in that white space to allow the colors to bleed together. Um, and I'm gonna come back around all of these circles and make sure that they have um, plenty, oops, plenty of colors around them. So I accidentally made kind of an orangey red color but that's okay, I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna add a little bit more here. Ooh, that's fun. Um, all right, and so, and I'm actually wondering if maybe I use the reverse side of this paper. Watercolor has two sides to the paper, but I'm noticing that some of it's kind of not um, sticking as well. That's okay, they both work, but um, something is a little different about this paint today. And that's, it just happens. But again, I'm just gonna go with it. Um, and so like I was doing before, I'm gonna add some pigment. Okay. And then I'm gonna um, move to a, like a pinker, my pinker color, my um, opera rose, which is just one of my favorites right now. Um, I'm a big fan of this color. It's funny, I did not expect it. Um, if you have been watching my Instagram stories prior to these tutorials, I actually talked about how I was totally unprepared to like this Apple Rose color. Um, I bought it because I, well, so I was painting and I did a tutorial and um, somebody used Opera Rose. And previously, I mean, I saw it and it looked perfectly fine in the tube. Um, but I mean, this looks like a pretty not exciting pink color, except do you know what? It's awesome. It's super bold and fun. It's almost neon. I really like it. 
All right, so we're just gonna keep it going. Um, and if you are somebody who um, ever shops on Etsy, I'm actually gonna list some of these for sale when I'm done um, on my store. And yeah, so if you want one, you can go claim it. Maybe I'll, I'll link to it in my post. All right, um, I'm actually gonna switch brushes uh, just because I feel like it. All right, so now I'm gonna go into this um, color that I created before. It's like a combination of the pink and the rose lilac. I'm moving into purples. And so I'm only gonna do a little bit of this one because it's a little um, browner than I expected it to come out. But that's okay too. I'm just gonna do that color dropping. And I kind of like that it's gonna give this fun transition, even though it's not quite what I was expecting. Um, one of the reasons that people use tube paint as well, or I mean, and pan paint, and, but it, and use it um, straight as it is, is because you know what's coming. Like, I'm not gonna be surprised by any of the colors that come out of, um, that was a mixed color, right? But colors that come out of the tubes, I'm not gonna be surprised by them. They're gonna be exactly what I expected because um, they are consistently what they are. Like that's part of the beauty of it. So I've had a couple people ask me about um, color mixing, which I do, right? I mean, I just was using one and I, uh, you'll see me mix some too on the, um, on the tutorial for the rocket chips, but um, I don't as much because I like the consistency that I get by using um, the same colors a lot. So, all right. Uh, okay, and with tube colors, one of the things I really like about them is you get a lot of intensity um, that I you can replicate with pans sometimes if they're high quality ones. Um, but you can't always, and so that part is a little bit hard. So, okay, uh, part of the fun of this too is uh, just all the ways these colors combine together. And so that's part of what, you know, even if you don't need to make, if you didn't find some four leaf clovers or another thing to press, um, that's okay, but you could still play with the blends here. So. I forgot that I do not really, I have a, like a turquoisey blue, but I don't have a strong blue on this palette. Um, so that's a purple. Let's see what I've got here. Aha, so I have this one, French Ultramarine. That's like a definite blue. Um, so I'm just gonna put a little dab on my palette. I'm not gonna use much. Um, with tube paint, a lot goes, or a little goes a long way. Um, but it's time to move into some blue before I go to teals and greens and back to yellow. So it looks like I actually might get a full rainbow after all. Yay! Um, if you know me in real life, you know I love colors. And then I also, I love rainbows. I've always loved them. My first cat I ever had, uh, her name was Rainbow Sunshine. Yes, really. I was five. So, uh, but I, yeah, named her Rainbow Sunshine. And then um, also when I was in um, high school at Girl Scout camp, I completed the CET or CIT, I'm sorry, um, program. I'm actually gonna get a little more. And, um, and one of the things that happened was that our, uh, our cabin leader who was leading us through the program, gave everybody a nickname, and um, mine was Rainbow, because I, everything was so colorful. I actually had, I mean, you know, it was, the, I was older, but I still had my Rainbow Bright pillowcase from when I was younger, so I used it, um, partially, because that way I would definitely know it was mine. Um, and then um, I just had, I mean, I've always been someone with color, if you watched my first tutorial, or I guess my second one, the first, the one about um, robots, you saw my dining room, and it's really colorful with all those flowers. Um, I just, I my books are arranged in rainbow or in, by color. Um, I took it out of true rainbow order, but uh, I just, I have always, always loved color. So I haven't been doing as much of the color dropping as I was previously. So I'm gonna 
do a little of that. Um, pull some over, dilute it with some water. Um, and I'm gonna likewise, although this paint is pretty dry over here, I'm gonna add some blue in there and I'm gonna add some water to get it to spread around a bit, right? To get it to bleed. Um, another way to do that would be to take some water here and just spread it out so I give it places to go. Um, but I think that'll look cool. And then since this is still wet, um, I'm gonna move on to my next color, which is another Daniel Smith color. Um, I forget what it's called. Here it is. Um, Mayan blue. So I'm gonna... Some people will tell you when you're painting, you should not start at the end and move in. And I'm only doing that because, like I explained a minute ago, I'm wanting to make sure that the colors blend well, but don't, but still have distinct lines. Like I don't want to accidentally um, end up with a totally blended color here. So I'm getting, I'm working this all the way over and then I'm encouraging them to bleed together and overlap. So I just want to tell you, cause there are lots of times when this is not what you, not the way you want to approach it. Um, I think I got, there's a fuzz that was on my brush that is now on my paper. All right. Yep. Yeah, I told you I had rainbow sunshine. Um, the other cat was named Bluey Moonbeam. I'm a sucker for cute cat names. My current cats, um, we have three of them. I only intended to adopt two, uh, but this it, there's a whole story. Um, and basically I was trying to decide which of the original two to put back. And that's when I realized I was getting three. Uh, but um, they have very Durham names because they lived at the rock shop in Durham for a while. So they're Eno, LRB, and Rigsby. Um, and those are all named after, uh, those names are all about uh, significant locations in the city of Durham. Um, as you might have gathered from my, just anything about me, or you'll see more of again in the rocket ship post. It's kind of weird when I post things out of order, but I just felt compelled to do this one today. Um, I am a big fan of the city of Durham. So, yep, um, I have been for a long time, but okay. So now we're to this fun color here. Um, I think that this is Windsor blue, Windsor green, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna make sure to pay attention here because this is a little hard to see where the edge of that circle is. They don't have to be perfect, um, which is a really nice thing to not have to worry about perfection with any of this because worst case scenario, if I'm not happy with um, it, I can tear up the piece of paper and, and paint another, I mean, Paper is inexpensive, I, you are right if you're thinking, but but the trees. Um, so I, you know, try to be reasonable about that, but also um, I am environmental in a lot of other ways. So, okay, I use paper. Um, but I also, I own some gouache paint. And so that can be a really good option um, to remove some of the, um, or to add details or whatever, if that's how I'm, what I'm feeling like doing without, um, to add details without uh, worrying about exactly where that circle went. Like I'll just paint some gouache around the edge there probably. I could use the white paint pen. Um, I could use a black pen or a color to, like I could take markers that are similar colored. Actually, that might be what I end up doing. Um, but okay, so now I want to do my greenest green. Um, in theory, I might have preferred it if I had maybe moved it, I'm not sure. And then I'm gonna be able to end on yellow. This worked out wonderfully. Um, yeah, and so when I'm done with this painting, I'm gonna let it dry, um, which hopefully won't take too long. And then I'm gonna um, put do, do those edges, do the circles. Um, I'll probably show you a picture at that point, and then 
Um, I'm gonna, I happen to have a laminator. Um, if you live near me and want me to do this part for you, we can work that out. But I'm gonna set the clovers in their places. I'm not even gonna glue them down because if you sandwich it in the laminator paper, they should stay. Um, and then I'm gonna um, laminate them and I'll cut them with my paper cutter. And I'm softening that hard line just a little. Um, I'm also coming through to make sure that uh, there aren't spots without color. And now I'm back to that yellow that I started with. So that's fun. All right, so now I'm just gonna add that in and let it bleed. There we go. Love it when that happens like I want it to. And add a few pieces of yellow here. All right, and now I wait for it to dry. All right.